Greetings viewers, this is Monto Maverick coming out here with another review video. Today we'll be reviewing Zoid's high-end master model 172 scale Liga Zero from Kotobukiya. The Liga Zero has been shown in certain forms of media. Most notably, in the West, it was shown in the anime series Zoid's New Century. In his debut in the first episode, it was noted that the LIGO Zero is a rare type of Zoid, whereas other LIGO types such as the Shield LIGO or Blade LIGO were most notable. Uh, there were many of them around, whereas a White LIGO was very few to say the least. In addition to that, it was also known as a Ultimate X Zoid, which means that it has a highly advanced AI system which gave it a personality of its own. Not only that, it only allowed only one only one person to pilot it. That person in the series was known as Big Cloud. In the series, the Blitz team uh, got possessed got possessed of the uh, Liga Zero when Doctor Toros was conned by a cheap dealer into buying it. Since I stated before, why Ligos were considered rare. Excuse me, I meant to say the Bliss team gained possession of the Ligos they are not possess. <laughs> My apologies. But needless to say, Big Cloud and Ligos Zero actually created a certain bond within the series that not many other pilots in their own personal Zords gained. Whereas, as I stated before, Ligos Zero had his own personality. So it wasn't really much of a pilot piloting a uh, machine, so to speak. It was more so of two individuals getting a bond working together. As weird as that may sound, it did create a, such a relationship that we barely have seen in certain anime series, especially at that time when this show first appeared back in 2004 or in the early mid-2000s. The one thing that makes this uh, Zoistin stand out is that it doesn't really have many weapons. Its main uh, signature attack is called a Strike Laser Claw which is utilized by charging his claws with a laser energy to enhance the power of, the, of a claw swipe. Basically with that, it allowed to smash and tear through many thick enemies' armor with little effort. In time though, it uh, was on with a chest mounted uh, shock cannon and along with a beam gun attached to his tail. With a lack of weapons though, in time, Especially in this series, the Liga Zero was uh, given a CAS uh, armor to equip it. The CAS, or Changing Armor System, helped the Liga change his armor into three variants. The Liga Zero Jaeger, blue armor, which was uh, used for high-speed battles. The Liga Zero Schneider, which was used uh, for close combat, orange with uh, blue blades and the Panzer unit, which mostly was used for long distance and armory and weaponry. Another thing about it being an Ultimate Exoid, Ultimate Xs was known to have uh, basically intelligence to the point that it can remember po uh, past the battles and then adapt to, to a second round of the same battle, or for that matter, it can adapt to a battle to the point that it can have a much better knowledge in terms of winning the battle or winning the fight. With all that being said, Zoro's new century wasn't the only anime that Liga Zero was in. The Liga Zero was also in the anime series called Zoro's Fusors. Uh, the Fusors series was basically a series where two Zoros can combine into a much powerful unit. Uh, there's not much to, else to say about that series because it wasn't too popular in the West. It got to the point that halfway through uh, animation and uh, really just dubbed, just cancel it. It did continue in Japan though. It, the series ended there. However, it was after the low popularity or low viewership or ratings of the Fuse Wars series, it ended, like I said, halfway. The pilot that piloted the Lago Zero in that series was named RD, which personally was a ripoff of Big Cloud. Basically, it was Big Cloud with blue hair. 
So uh, it was not much to say about that. The probably doing the stand out RD. But uh, along with that, though, eventually in the series, the Liga Zero was fused with a Phoenix and was known as Liga Zero Phoenix. And afterwards, it was fused with the Jet Falcon, which became Liga Zero Va Falcon. Which, oddly enough, a uh, Falcon was stronger than a Phoenix. In any case, at the end of the series, the Liga Zero was to be revealed to be a legendary Alpha Zoid. A Zoid that responded to R.D.'s uh, determination, making it the Zoid that R.D. was uh, spent his childhood searching for. Now, it wasn't just the anime that the Liga Zero was in. It was also in the manga as well. Now, the manga, the, the main uh, manga that the Liga Zero was in was the Kalak Century one. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Chaos Century, Chaos Century was, you can say, the anime prior to New Century, but it came after New Century when it got transferred to the West. I know it's a little bit confusing, but unfortunately, that was just how did it go. I think uh, they were just planning to see how was the New Century in the West, and since that became popular, they brought the original Zoid series here as well. But in the manga, the legacy was actually piloted by Van himself. Where Van was the main character in Zoid's O Century. Oh, I'm sorry, Chaos Century. In the manga, though, uh, Zor uh, Van's Blade Liger was uh, badly damaged to the point it could not be repaired. However, the Zoid core was still intact. So, Zoid core was uh, transported into the next generation Liger Zero chassis. Kind of hit my camera on the last part there. <laughs> in any case, uh, the Legacy will only uh, exchange his armor a couple times within the manga. However, it was only used for that to, to get piloted by different pilots, uh, Viola and Rosso, respectively. Whereas Viola piloted the Jaeger, whereas Ros Rosso piloted the Schneider units. Now, enough of the anime and manga. As for the kid itself, you can actually say this was the second. Liga Zero Kid that came out. The first one was actually uh, created by Hasbro in the early to mid 2000s. That kid, though, was a customized mobilized line. Basically, there was a, a contraption unit that will help mobilize any Zoid kit for the most part. For kits as big as Liga Zero, though, it was not uh, mobilized by a wind up mechanic. It was actually used by battery. By flipping a switch, you can see the Zoid walk. But the, but the bad thing about those kits, you cannot really pose them well. Only very few of them you could. Whereas the Kulabukula line has no wide up mechanic, there's no batteries, but you can easily pose these figures. But before we get to the figure, this, let's uh, look at the box. Now you can see here, the cover art is quite astounding. You see the Liga Zero using a strike laser claw on this Saber Fang over here to the left. And whenever it uses strike laser claw, these, um, I would say these uh, face fins actually stick out. And I'll show you that uh, momentarily. So you can see here RZ041. Is a code for the Liga Zero, or is he standing for Republican Zoid or Republic Zoid for that matter? The Kolobukia line, still created by Takara Tomi, which is a different line entirely. IMS model code 022. And if we get a closer look, we get some specs here. And one thing about the Liga Zero is that you can have an armor or no armor. Now the, the armorless one is just very sleek design, basically a skeletal system. And this one is uh, fully armored in its basic form. There's a size, same thing as the front. And for this one, on this side, you get a front view, a rear view, both armor and 
Omer lists or yeah. Because I see some uh, parts of the, uh, the kit, the size stabilizers and the back uh, boosters. And why here because a good idea of all the armor pieces with the armorless uh, Lago Zero. But one thing that I want to show you here is uh, you have a big cloud figurine with this kit. That's why this kit actually came with a big cloud figurine, which now you can only get the Marking Plus. You can still get this kit. However, if you were to purchase this with a big cloud figurine, the price of it would be a lot more than the Marking Plus. The Marking Plus is no different than this kit, really. The only difference is you get a generic pilot. That's only the main difference. And just a standard uh, action pose right here for the side. And, it, and that's about it for the box. So within the box, you get the manual, proper manual. You get some uh, standard specs, some points of uh, mobility. Get the Zoe core right here. And you have actually a good amount of runners here. Uh, A through Q from what I can see here. And of course some of these runners are duplicated. You got uh, two runners of polycaps. The Zoe core, the little figurine. And just like the other kits I've uh, reviewed before, it starts with a head onto the bust or body. Then the four legs and hind legs. The tail or weapons, along with his, uh, his booster pack. And there you are, fully assembled. And you get a color palette near the end. So in case you want to uh, customize this kit, uh, paint it yourself, that's fine. Right. I personally did not uh, paint this, but I did do something else. And that's it for the manual. And surprisingly enough, this kit only came with two decals. I was a little bit surprised. Uh, perhaps say the Marking Plus has a little bit more. But yeah, just two zero decals, which just known, which is only used for his uh, front legs. I'll show you where they are located. But just enough about the inside of the kit, on the inside of the box, I mean. Now let's get on to the kit. And here we have the 172 scale higher master model Liger Zero. As you can tell, I'm actually thankful that it can still fit in my turntable. This kit, I would say, is not the biggest kit on the line, but it's uh, it has a good bulk to it, that much I will say. And honestly, I kind of wish I still had my old Lego Zero um, from Hasbro many years ago, the customized and mobilized line, just so I can compare these two. But uh, I am still thankful that I kept this one, because this is a lot better than that one. Um, I don't really miss the uh, Rhino mechanic or really the battery power mechanic. But the fact that I'm able to pose this just make it stand out. Not only that, but uh, there's a lot of different uh, colors on, on this kit compared to the original kit, so to speak. And if you can clearly tell, I actually did some paint line to this kit. I did some to its uh, hind legs, uh, mostly in the uh, white armor pieces, uh, some in the, uh, uh, mostly in the head, some of the side stabilizers right here. Is where majority of it uh, have gone, and some on the uh, thrusters as well. But aside from that, though, I really am thankful for this kit. Uh, it was a fun blast to build. Um, it, I really liked the way how it turned out at the end. But yeah, I would definitely say this is uh, by far one of my favorite uh, uh, Zoys kits I have in my possession. Not just the way how it looks, but uh, the Vigo series has a soft spot in my heart. Uh, really, uh, it really has, the, I guess, that bond, so to speak. Just like how Big Cloud had his bond with Vigo series in the series. 
Now let me show you the articulation of the lag zero, but before I do, this is what I mean. As you can see here, a little big cloud figurine. Honestly, if you were to still find this kid with a big cloud figurine, I can you not, you could be spending at least a hundred, if not more, dollars on just this kid alone. Whereas the uh, Marking Plus, is, you could probably get a little bit less than a hundred dollars, and that's even with the shipping. So I just want to point that out. So for articulation purposes, um, so I'll have the head, move it side to side like that, and up and down. Uh, these pieces actually do come out, and this is mostly for its, I guess, attack mode. Let me actually move this. Unless this is stuck. There we go. So you can move these uh, face fins out, or whiskers, so to speak. So whenever these are sticking out, that's mostly that the legacy is getting ready to strike with a claw. Put that back. Now for its uh, front legs, it can go all around. Forward and back. Outward and inward. Little uh, wrist movement. Uh, the toes don't move, which is uh, what I'm kind of surprised about. The other kid, the toes could actually move independently. The shoulders actually do move slightly, like so. Which I'm actually kind of surprised about. Uh, the uh, shot cannon on the bottom can actually move a little bit and try to be careful without actually detaching it. One thing I do want to show you is that right here is a Zoic core. So we can just put that back inside there. There we go. The thrusters here can actually move, and if you were to lift this, the thrusters do stick out a little bit. And these stabilizers can go down like so. And to give you a much better a view on the, uh, some decaling I did, on that decaling, panel lining I did. Now remember in the series that these stabilizers were, were to stick out so it can help stabilize itself whenever uh, these thrusters were being used to increase its speed. Similar to how uh, some cars have certain uh, vents in, in its uh, hood just so it can handle like wind pressure whenever you increase the speed of it. If I'm wrong on that, please comment on below. I'm not too familiar with cars. I just drive them. In any case, the body does actually move up slightly. Like so. And side to side. The tail does move uh, pretty independently. I do have a few points of articulation. Which is actually one thing I did like about this kit. The tail could move in many different areas. And lastly, the back legs. You go all the way up, all the way back. Just like the front. The shoulders can move. Oop. That's fine. I could just put that back on. And just like any model kit, pieces do fall off. So the handling can move 
and so can the feet. So, and that's it about it for articulation. And now for some size comparisons. Here's a Leica Zero with the real grade Strike Freedom. I'd say high to rise, I think the Strike Freedom got them, but definitely in terms of bulk, Leica Zero definitely wins on this one. And here's the with the Master Grade Wing Gundam. Definitely a big high difference, but like I said, with the uh, Strike Freedom, bulk wise, I think Leica Zero got this one. And here is it with the IMS Mod Terrace Bomber. The higher master model gun sniper with this weasel unit total assault. And here's a with the higher master model landing sykes. I'll say height uh, just because of its uh, back end, line sight definitely got this one, but I would say uh, like so we just have just a slightly bigger bulk. Yeah, I think uh, lengthwise, like I said, we got just because its tail is a bit longer. And lastly, is it with the Shadow Fox? Definitely a big difference here. And that's it for size comparisons. Just a quick uh, photo of the Blitz team from Zord's uh, new century, of course, with the exception of the Reynos. But basically, these are all the uh, Zords and basically uh, in the conclusion of the Zord's uh, new century series. Shadowfox was replaced with a Command Wolf. The Gun Stumper was replaced with a, I'm sorry, the D Bison was replaced with the Gun Stumper you see in front of you. The Command Wolf was replaced with a Shadowfox. And the terrorist bomber was replaced with the Reynos. Like a zero, because of the because it's part of the main character or was with the main character, stayed throughout the entire series. And of course, if you have a proper uh, action base, uh, definitely for that of a master grade for Gunpla, you could definitely use this as a uh, a base to do an aerial spot for like a zero. Now, fortunately, there's only one connection piece that can actually fit uh, on the bottom of the Liga Zero, but uh, hey, at least you'll be able to do any action poses such as this, so that is definitely a plus. And with that being said, uh, let me share my final thoughts. You know, the good, the bad, and in, in the in-between. <sighs> Let's start off with the good. For starters, the posability is actually pretty good. Uh, all the legs can move independently, the mouth, uh, the... Uh, the action parts, the stabilizers, uh, definitely everything will work well. And I gotta give credit to the credits due, the tail has a lot of articulation points. A lot more than it should be, but I just like that little added uh, spot that the code book here do with his kits. Uh, second, which is uh, actually, I would say, very good for the, especially for the Liga Zero, is that the armor piece can actually come off very easily. And in case you were to get any of the CAS armor, uh, Jaeger, Snyder, or the Panzer. You could definitely take all of the all of these armor pieces off, and of course, replace them with those. Uh, secondly, I would this is more of a preference, but I would say that the fact that there's actually a lot of good uh, spots to do any um, uh, 
panel lining like I did, this definitely is a plus for me. Uh, and obviously, panel lining is for the builder's uh, choice. Uh, it's not really needed, necessarily. But uh, I just do like that added effect, especially with the stabilizers in the head. It definitely does bring it out. Now, this is a plus, but only for this particular kit, and that is the big cloud figurine. I really do like the fact that it comes with it. Unfortunately, the Marking Plus, the kit that's out now, just comes with a generic pilot. But if you're able to get one with the big cloud figurine with, for a reasonable price, of course, uh, it is up to you uh, what's defined as reason reasonable, then by all means, you can be sure to pick it up. Because there's not too many of those kids that actually have that uh, a certain figurine. Are there any negative? I would say just a minor one. Um, yes, uh, is it a model kit, so some pieces do fall off. Uh, I will say the boosters did fall off a few times as uh, when I am recording this video. But the fact that that's actually one of the armor uh, pieces that actually can come off, I'm not going to use that as a big uh, of a letdown, so to speak, just because it can come off. So I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, to me, it's not the biggest deal. Another negative. Uh, and this is mostly for this kit since I actually did build some time ago, is that be careful with certain uh, parts and certain joints. In time, it can be a little bit loose. So what we can do is to, to remove that joint, maybe put some super glue inside, wait till it dries, and then put the joint back on. Just so it can uh, steady. Uh, just so, but at the same time, just be careful with that glue, depending on which one you use. With the pen, if it would just uh, crack the area a little bit more, if not, maybe just strengthen it. Uh, just to just be very careful with that. But with that being said, uh, is this a kit worth getting? No hesitation, absolutely. This kit is definitely is the one that sticks out, whether it be this one, the the first one that, come, that came out, or even that of the Marking Plus. It's a lot of zero. It definitely is a plus, in my opinion. Uh, you can't go wrong with this kit, so whether you are a fan of the... Uh, uh, the Zoid itself, or you are a fan of the series, or just a fan of Zoids, this is definitely a really good addition to your collection. So yes, if you can find one at a reasonable, plot, reasonable price, be sure to pick one up. Thank you all for watching, it's been a long time coming, I've been wanting to review this kit for, for such a time, and only because not only was uh, Zoids was a uh, Big hit in my childhood, definitely one of my favorite shows uh, growing up. Uh, but the Lagos like was, of course, my favorite Zoid. I know it's many people's favorite Zoid too, just because of how iconic it truly is. So that's which is why this video, this review is very important. Uh, I'm so happy that I, I finally did it, and there's a couple of reasons uh, why I've been waiting uh, quite some time to get it done. But so yeah, like I said, if you be, if you can find this at a reasonable place, be sure to pick it up. With that being said, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, be sure to share this to anyone you believe who is a avid Zoid Gunpla or just a model kit builder entirely. Perhaps uh, there'd be some. This would be something that they would enjoy watching, so they have a much better idea if they want to pick up a certain kit. Uh, there are two videos up here. Uh, in case, uh, just be sure to review all the other uh, videos I have already posted on my channel. It uh, definitely will help out with the YouTube algorithm or whatever the case may be. So with that being said, again, thank you all for watching. And until next time, keep on building. A little bonus part for this review video. As I said before, I was waiting uh, quite some time to actually review this kit because I was actually waiting for something. And that's something that actually kind of goes with this kit if you really think about it. For those of you who are fans of the Zoid or even uh, Zoid's new... As always, a new century, the anime series, you know what I talk about. So, to give you a proper idea as to why it is so long, you can't do a proper LIGO Zero review without including the CAS system. Stay tuned where you'll be uh, seeing the other versions of this, especially. The Empire version, like a Zero X. I'm going to be busy for a very long time. <laughs> Stay tuned.